Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Ollie Hayes and today I'm bringing you my final thoughts on Chelsea 6, Everton 0 at Stamford Bridge on Monday night. Yeah, there's no easy way to put this, is it? An absolutely shocking performance from Everton, an absolutely shocking evening of football um, for everyone involved. Players, staff, you know, coaching staff, they all have to be blamed for that horrendous performance down at Stamford Bridge on Monday night. And I, I genuinely think that is... Uh, probably one of the most worrying times I've ever seen Everton in, in the whole time I've been watching them. That is genuinely one of the most worrying performances I've ever seen Everton put in. It was so poor. Every single player on the on the, on the the team was absolutely horrendous. It looked like some of them were even down tools for, for Sean Dyche. And for me, that that is a, a very worrying sign. But why not get straight into to reviewing the game? And I thought we, we started okay. Um, one decent chance for better. I know he was offside, um, so it didn't matter that he put the ball wide anyway. But... A decent chance, nevertheless, probably would have wanted to see the hit the back of the net and, and you know, regardless of the flag going up. But after that, that first Cole Palmer goal in, in just, you know, waltzing past Jared Branthwaite and, and slotting the ball into, into Pickford's bottom right-hand corner, I think it was absolutely abysmal defending. It was it was absolutely horrendous. And, you know, I think Sean Dyche is, is a manager that prides himself so much on strong, strong defensive performances, not leaking a lot of goals keeping shots to a minimum, keeping chance creation for the opposition team to a minimum. And we didn't do that. We were absolutely horrendous in, in stopping Chelsea's you know one biggest threat in Cole Palmer. I, I personally would have liked to see someone man marking Cole Palmer. I know, you know, we haven't really got the, the personnel to be you know keeping up with him toe to toe because he is a fantastic player. And I said that in the in the starting eleven show. We were, you know, wanting to see a midfielder that will be able to combat Cole, Cole Palmer. It's very difficult to do that because he is a top player. He is he is a fantastic talent. But you know, I would have liked to see someone with the tenacity of maybe James Garner or Amadou Anana just just stand on on Cole Palmer and be able to defend that. But we didn't do that. The, the tactics were all wrong, and Cole Palmer just had a field day, didn't he? he? Just he just kept scoring. You know, three goals within I think it was thirty seven minutes, and for me that that is embarrassing for Everton, especially a team that you know pride themselves on being so defensively solid and and wanting to be defensively solid. We were absolutely abysmal at doing that, and then the chance creation going up the other end was was equally as bad. So that first half, genuinely, I think that was one of the the most worrying performances I've seen Everton ever put in in my life. Watching them it was so so bad. And, you know, there's this, I don't really want to single out players, but you kind of have to, you kind of have to single out the likes of Amadou and Arna. That first half was absolutely appalling. The, the performance he put in, I thought that was, that was really, really poor from him, especially a player that's, you know, priding himself on, on wanting to be a player that sticks around for us. And I think last season, he, he probably has outstayed his, you know, the, the, the ambition that he wanted to have. He probably would have liked to move on last summer and, and move to a team that, you know, were, were, pushing up the league or, or pushing into European places. I think he he probably warranted the performances that last season. This season, I don't think he's warranted those performances. I think we all know there's a, definitely a player in there with Amadou Anana. There's definitely a player there that has the ability to unlock teams. You know, you look at his his forward progression. You know, the stats say it say it himself. That last season, I thought he was fantastic at doing that. I thought his attacking passes were, were so, so good last season. I thought, you know, he was a player that was going to kick on this season, give us, a you know, 38 games of, of great performances and then, move on to a bigger club and I would have had absolutely no complaints had he done that but I thought he was so poor on Monday night and for me it did look like he downed tools a little bit and then that obviously resulted in him getting hooked at half time he, he got subbed off and is that a sign of the times now is that a sign that Amadou Nana has really given up on it and, and has really got to a point where he, he's not willing to fight for for every ball and every chance and, and just the club in itself that that for me is a, is a big worry and it's something that I think only time will tell and this Forest game on Sunday is going to be a huge indicator of that but other players such as Ashley Young Seamus Coleman you know playing and for me that was Sean Dyche hanging Ashley Young and Seamus Coleman out to dry there I thought that was a, a really strange decision because you're playing a right hand side of, of Ashley Young and Seamus Coleman against Mikhailo Mudrick who's one of the fastest league, the fastest wingers in the league if not in Europe he's absolutely lightning quick and a player like Ashley Young just you know, he hasn't got the legs anymore to keep up with a a, a mid twenties year old strike a, a mid twenty year old winger that's so quick. You know he hasn't just he hasn't got the ability to do that. So I thought that was that was really poor from Dyche in terms of the team selection. You know, keep it give give Nathan Patterson a run out. Nathan Patterson's probably the the quickest right back we've got, or even Ben Godfrey. Those two are, are the quickest right backs we've got. The the quickest defenders that we've got that can play in that position. Why not put them out there to combat Mudrick? It was it was a real strange decision. And I thought Coleman and and Young they couldn't really do anything. I, I I did feel a little bit sorry for them because they haven't got the pace anymore to keep up with him. And as well, James Garner who was another player that I thought was was really poor in the midfield. I, I genuinely don't think there was one mediocre performance in that first half. I don't think anyone 
could have come off that pitch saying, yeah, I, I put in an average performance there. I wasn't at my best, but I wasn't at my worst. I thought every single player on that pitch came should have come off at half time with the hangs with their heads hung in shame because it was horrendous. Every single performance. And it, it's you know it's getting to a point when everyone's playing bad and Jordan Pickford is having a bad game. You know, for for Cole Palmer's third goal, the one that looped over him. And I think it can partly be blamed to the tactics. I, I don't want to be pointing all the fingers at Dyche. I don't want to be saying, look, it's Sean Dyche. Everything that went wrong on Monday night, Sean Dyche. The players have to take some re responsibility as well. But I do think that, you know, we shouldn't be setting up teams as to just lump it long. And then once Pickford hasn't got an option long, he, he's then looking to find Amadou Nana in, in, in the midfield there. He can't find him. It, it, it's one loose pass and Cole Palmer takes one touch and, and slots it over over Jordan Pickford. I, I do think, you know, Pickford has to take 99.9% .9 of the blame for that. But I do think the tactics probably would help if we, you know, set up as a team where Onana did drop deep, come to the ball. But I don't think they've been coached in a way to do that. I think they've been coached in a way that sees the ball lumped long from either, either centre-back or the goalkeeper. And then you know, once there isn't an option going forward and, and Pickford has to play it short to, to the likes of James Garner or Amadou Nana in midfield, they don't know how to do that. So I think the you know, the tactics for me really showed that, you know, we are in a very dire situation in terms of going forward and, and as well defensively. I think, you know, the attacking trans creation was absolutely abysmal in that first half. And, and even, you know, in the second half, you expect a reaction, don't you? You expect, you know, a team that have been given a, a really, really big telling off at half time. You expect them to come off Come up, come up back onto the pitch and and give you know at least a little bit more effort than what they showed in the first half. But I don't think they did that. I think they were, you know, they didn't look like they knew what they were doing. It, it looked like a really, really disjointed Everton performance and, and a disjointed Everton squad. And for me, that comes from from one place and it comes from one point of view. And for me, that comes from you know Dice losing the dressing room. I think Dice has now lost these players. I don't think they're willing to give one hundred and ten percent like they were twelve months ago. For the for this relegation battle, I, I just don't think they're willing to give you know anything any any terms of effort to this manager. I, I think they've they've completely you know been, been disillusioned by, it and I think they've completely lost faith in him. But that does bring me on quite nicely to Daesh and and this run in. You know, six games left now. I do think it, it's time for him to go. For me, I, I've said it for the last few weeks now. I, I think I've said it for the last month or so that I do want Daesh to be sacked. I, I don't think that he is the man to take us forward, and I don't think he's the man even to keep us in this league. I think it'll take a a, a minor miracle to keep us in the league with Sean Dyche as our manager but the problem is we, we've seen now that we've, we've not really got a board to sack him that there isn't a, a, a senior figure in place to be like right we need to sack Sean Dyche there, there just isn't that figure in place so for me I think we do just have to stick with him between now and these six games and just hope he gets sacked in the summer because and, and that is really sad for me because we're a team that should be having a project we should, we're a team that should be having you know goals two, three years down the line moving into the stadium. At the moment, we're, we're trying to hang out for six games and then sack a manager at the end of the season with six games to go. And, you know, for me, it's just, it shows how far we've fallen as a club and, you know, we can just have to rally with him now for the for these last six games. And But that, that's me saying on the record that I do want Sean Dice sacked, but I, I don't think it will happen. But moving on to that Forest game on Sunday, that is going to be a, a, a massive, massive test, I think, at Goodison Park. A team that are around us in the league, a team that we, you know, we know are fighting for points as a we. I just genuinely think that it's make or break on Sunday. And if Sean Dyche doesn't get it right, I do think we're destined for the championship. But that being said, I want to end it on a little bit of a positive note. We all have to rally together. I know as Evertonians, after after Monday night, it's very hard to do so. And it's very hard to get in a mindset where you can be positive looking at these last six games. But this Forest game is a good opportunity. I think they've only got 10 points in the calendar year of 2024 and we've got nine. So they are a team that you know have been playing similarly in, in terms of form um, in the league to us. So it's not out of the question that it's going to be a close game. I'm not saying that we're, we're going to run away with it, but as Evertonians, all we can do is turn up on Sunday in our numbers with our voices and just just get behind the lads and rally rally with them to the end of the season. But I'm not saying that Evertonians will probably want to do that because after Monday night, I don't think the, the lads have warranted that that um, type of welcome and that type of support. But us as Evertonians, we want to be a Premier League team uh, at the end of May, don't we? So... That's all we can do as Evertonians, just get behind the lads and, and bring our voices to Nottingham Forest on Sunday. But apologies for the the slightly negative tone for this video. It was very, very disappointing and, and pretty demoralising in that away end on Monday night. And a lot of Evertonians have, have completely lost all faith. And I, I wouldn't blame you, but 
Just one last push now. Six games to go. Let's just hope we can get over the line. But that is all for me today on the Toffee Blues. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let me let me know your thoughts about the Chelsea game, the Forest game on Sunday, and Sean Dye. Should he be sacked? Should he be not? But that's all. Thanks for listening.